I would just say start out with a list of all your regular tasks that you do every week. Start out with what's most important and then plug them into times on your schedule. And the other most important thing is to turn off your notifications. Today, we're talking all about productivity and time blocking with the one and only Wendy Wallace Chuck. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your business? Then welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast, helping home professionals and luxury brands accelerate their success with proven marketing strategies and expert industry practices. Now, here's your host, Darla Powell. Hey there, welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast. I am your host, the Grand High Poobah of all things Wingnut. At Wingnut Social, a social media marketing agency for you guys, the interior designers and luxury brands. Today, we have our pal, our gal pal, Wendy Wallacechuk on the podcast today. And I'll tell you why she's on the podcast. Not only is it long overdue. Sorry about that, Wendy. Oh, and go Dolphins. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not a Patriots fan. Boo, I know. I saw her on one of her Facebook Lives it was a couple of months ago, it might have been even longer. And she was doing a webinar seminar talk on time blocking and productivity and how it's made her more efficient in her business. And it's something that I have been kind of eyeballing. Should I do that? Shouldn't I do that? Time blocking. Should I get more discipline to apply it to my daily schedule? So I'm hoping, hoping Wendy, that you're going to be able to talk me into it today because I haven't been doing it. I do keep a schedule on my Google Calendar, which is incredibly helpful. I'm looking at that constantly and I set that aside, but I'm not putting aside distractions and 100% focusing on the task at hand in front of me. You know me, man, my nickname is Wingnut. That's how Wingnut Social got its name because I see squirrels. <laughs> I really am. I am that dog in the movie Up. Squirrel! That is 100% me. And I'll be doing a podcast or I'll be doing the notes or I'll be even be doing a freaking webinar. I am not kidding you. And something will pop up and there it is. Darla's gone. We've lost Darla. <laughs> so, so today we're going to be talking to Wendy uh, how it's helped her in her business. And one of the things I'm really keen to talk to her about is how it helps her to source for clients more efficiently. Because if you're an interior designer and you're out there listening God, do we know how that can go down a rabbit hole <laughs> of just hours and hours of sitting in front of the computer looking for stuff. But, oh, Facebook, oh, Instagram, oh, Twitter. Oh, here's this very amazing cat video, which you must see right this second. So let's let's see what Wendy has to say. But first, doo -doo -doo, before we get into the Wendy Wallace Chuck show. <laughs> sorry, Wendy, you know I love you. It's time for... Mini News Sesh with Shana Heinrichy. Mini News Sesh. It's time for Mini News. Mini News Sesh. Yeah. yeah. Hey there, Shana Heinrichy. Thanks for coming back to share your special knowledge on the Instagram algorithm. We all know that the algorithm, holy cow, is always changing. We can, it's very difficult to keep up, but we do do that here at Wingnut Social. We like to call it job security. And you've put together some tidbits on some of the most important things that affect the algorithm. So if you're listening out there and you're not driving, get a pen and paper, take some notes. All right, Shana, let's launch this. Well, there's really three major parts of the algorithm. So we're going to talk about those first, uh, interest, relationship, and timeliness. Okay. Interest, go. Yeah. Interest has to do with people commenting on your content, liking content, sharing it, video views. Remember that the Instagram algorithm, when it's talking about these things, it's always focusing on the user, what's going to go into their feed based on these factors. It's not really talking about you in terms of what you post. So it wants to look at what the user likes and comments on, and it's going to show it more of that sort of content. Okay, so this is pretty like the interest part, the comments, likes, reshares, and video views. That's been pretty stable. Yeah. That's something we've always kind of known has affected the algorithm. But there's some stuff here now you have next that threw me a little bit. I was like, oh, really? So tell us about this next one, relationship. 
That's who the user cares about the most. Okay. So Instagram is trying to figure out your relationship with the people that you're interacting with. This includes things like who you know in real life. So if they're sliding into my DMs, that could be a little uh, revealing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Who you direct message, that's a component of it. People whose content you like, even stories and lives, like any sort of content, of course, that's important, who you search for. And then who you direct message. So brands might want to think about DMing people more on Instagram, not in an inauthentic or spammy way. But if you were going to send someone a message anyway, you might send it through the DMs. And then that helps establish your relationship and might get you more views on Instagram. And I have been doing a lot more DMing on Instagram. I've noticed that for Darla Powell Interiors especially, I'm, I get several, several, several DMs a day where I'm having conversations. And it seems like the more I get, the more I get. I don't know if that makes a difference with, with the followers, but I guess what you're saying I, I might have something to do with it. Yeah, it might have something to do with it. I wouldn't double down on this like this is, you know, this is my main technique for getting <laughs> followers. All right. Okay, cool. But It definitely plays a role or it appears to play a role. So, uh, yeah, it's something to think about. So if you're listening out there, slide into my DMs. All right. What's next? Timeliness, how old the post is. So this isn't really the like the most important factor. It'll show you old posts if it thinks you really like them, like posts that have tons and tons of likes on them that are old. It'll show you those. So it's one factor. They want to show you more timely things, newer posts, if all other factors are equal. They want to try and show you the newer posts. Okay. So if you have an older post and it's getting a ton of likes, you're not out of the game necessarily. They're still going to put that forward because I see it's juicy content, but generally speaking, they're leaning towards the brand new shiny thing. Okay. Next you have frequency, consistency in posting and frequency. Yeah. So for frequency, it is important that you post consistently. So I'm just going to say this with the algorithm. You don't want to change your posting frequency quickly. You don't want to like post for three days in a week and then not post for two weeks. If you're, say, doing one post a week, up it slowly till you get to five posts a week. Or if you're doing five posts a week and need to slow down, do it slowly. Don't do it all at once. Why do you think that is? Why that um, I don't that doesn't make sense to me in my brain. Why do they want to see that like ramp up or ramp down gradual? Well, again, you know, these are all the things that we think as social media managers and people who are experts in the field, but we don't know for certain. But we have seen that the algorithm dislikes anything it considers suspicious, any sort of different activity. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. It wants to see the similar sort of activity, and it will sort of mark your account as having something suspicious going on when Mm. you change things too quickly, and we don't want that to happen. That doesn't mean that you're going to get like a warning of suspicious activity. They mark people suspicious in the back all the time, and we don't even know about it. (laughs) I've been marked suspicious a couple times, but that's another story. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. So (laughs) they base this on for frequency. They're looking at how often the person, the actual user is checking social or checking Instagram. So if you check often, you'll have more of a chronological feed. If you don't check the account very often, when you log in, you'll get more highlights of what seemed to be the most important stuff rather than as chronological as of a feed, which may be why you and your friend are seeing totally different things, even if you're following the same people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this next one you have is really is giving me like goosebumps because I, I love ghosts, but I'm not so sure I love what you have here. Ghost followers. What the hell is a ghost follower? A ghost follower is someone who's inactive. It might be a bot account, bot B-O-T or bot B-O-U-G-H-T. So maybe you purchase some followers or bots started following you. There's lots of different ways that that can happen. It's not always your fault. Or it could be that people have created accounts and then just kind of stopped using them for the last couple of years. So you don't want to have a really large percent of inactive followers following you. Okay, so it's not dead people. Okay, good to know. <laughs> All right. All right. So those are some really good points that could affect your the way you perform on Instagram with the algorithms from a user standpoint. Is there anything that uh, we left out? Or are we good to go? No, I think that's it. All right, Shannon. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Mini news sesh. Yeah. yeah.
All right, guys, now let's get into my interview with the fabulous Wendy Wallacechuk. But before we talk to her about time blocking and she convinces me to do it, let me tell you a little bit about her. Wendy Wallacechuk is the owner of Details Interiors located in Western Massachusetts. Wendy has successfully grown her firm and has become the go-to interior designer in her hometown, where most of her clients, believe it or not, have never worked with an interior designer before. In addition to running a busy design firm, Wendy is a frequent speaker on market panels and telesummits and is now teaching other designers through online courses and is one third of the Design for Today Collaborative, a group committed to educating interior designers and home stagers so that they are able to build their business in a supportive environment. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Wendy Wallacechuk to the Wingnuts Social Podcast. Hey there, Wendy Wallacechuk. How the hell are you? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. How the hell are you? I am doing great. (laughs) Ben will beep that out. You know, we're we're way overdue. I have 200 episodes in this podcast and you haven't been on yet. So there you go. Now you ask. Here I am. I know that was that was magical. (laughs) So I was telling the audience how I caught you on one of your Facebook lives and you were talking about time blocking and I had a little aha moment. First of all, it was a very good presentation uh, video. Thank you. And a little aha moment. I'm like, you're very welcome. I'm like, we have never discussed this aspect of productivity on the podcast. And I always not always, but a lot of the times I come from a very selfish point of view on what can I ask an expert to, <laughs> to better myself? Because I have a really sincere interest in learning about time blocking and whether or not I should do it. And those are my favorite shows to do when I want to learn something from an expert. So we're going to dig in. One of the things that you you talked about, and we'll save that a little down the road as a teaser, is how you found time blocking to be really effective for you for sourcing for clients for your design business. But let's talk. Start off and tell me how you started time blocking, what time blocking is, and then we'll we'll get into the pros and, and cons if there's any, I guess. Sure. So time blocking is really just a way of intentionally planning out every minute of your day. <laughs> so oh. because <laughs> here's the thing, if you're not planning, then you're planning to fail, right? So oh, true. It, good one. It creates some focus and it forces you to manage your time efficiently and to focus on exactly what you're doing. Because it's a proven fact that if you are multitasking, then you are focusing on a million different things and you're not doing any of them 100%. So when you're focused on one task, you're giving that one task 100%. You're more effective and you're giving it your full attention. I have to tell you, I'm a huge multitasker. And I hear what you're saying. I kind of retain a little bit of everything, but not 100% of anything <laughs> when right. I'm doing it. It's yeah, safe. it's true. And when and I'll yeah. have to do it again and again and again to absorb it. And nine times out of 10, what ends up happening is I finally put the Instagram away, I put the Facebook away, I put the girlfriend away. Yep. <laughs> and I focus yep. for an hour on the task at hand. And that is when I finally get some work done. Right. So you're doing time blocking and you don't even know it. But but reluctantly. See? When you put all that away. <laughs> but only after not doing time blocking. So I've wasted like two hours. <laughs> if you started with that time block, then you wouldn't be going back to I, it. Right? I, I guess I think what worries me the most is that commitment of setting that and only doing that for yep. that hour or that 45 minutes. Because I got, I got knots in my gut. When you're like, you have to time block every minute of your day. Were you exaggerating or is that legit? (laughs) Uh, It's a little bit of an exaggeration. However, if you actually do the time blocking and set those specific blocks of time aside, then you have that to work with. You can be a little bit flexible within those. I mean, if you set aside two hours to do product sourcing for clients and then, you know, a contractor calls with an emergency phone call, then obviously you're going to stop sourcing, deal with that issue, and then go back to your block. However, you're not breaking away to deal with that issue and then checking your email, checking into Facebook, and going off in some other rabbit hole. It forces you to focus. (laughs) Get out of my head. Get out of my head, Wendy. That's exactly (laughs) what I'm doing. (laughs) Yeah, it's a regimented way to be focused on one specific task at a time. So, Like in our office, we break down 
the week, right? I have my assistant. She works Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. So on those specific days, we have each day broken down into a time block. So I start my mornings the same every single day. I have coffee. I go through my Facebook and my Instagram for about a half an hour. And then I block in a time to do some exercise and then and take a shower <laughs> and then get to the office. We have a block of time where we have our morning meeting. And then we head into emails. I have that set time to check emails. The key is you have to shut off your notifications. So my watch, my phone, I do not have notifications turned on for social media or for my email. They are turned off. I have notifications up my butt, uh, on my desktop, yep. my laptop, my watch, my phone, my iPad. Okay, so turn yep. those all it's off. It's too distracting for me. Yep, so I have them turned off. And then we get right into the day. We spend, you know, on Mondays, we spend a good bit of time. She spends about an hour and a half doing social media, doing Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and all the things. But it's done in that block of time. And then she has about two hours that she works on the blog and our newsletter. And then we have a little bit of time before lunch where we check emails again, because we're not checking them during that time block. And then we have a time blocked in to have lunch. And then after lunch, we have client work. And then at the end of the day, we're checking emails again. And then I usually check back in on social media before I leave the office so that I'm not doing it at night when I'm supposed to be hanging out with my husband. Oh, yeah. He probably appreciates that. Yeah. So he's not like, why are you on your phone? Oh, my constantly. gosh. I used to get that so. all the time. And, you know, um, yeah. in, in her defense, it was annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. It is. But it's necessary. Yeah, especially when you own a marketing, a social marketing agency. But OK, so you time block the working out. You do you check your emails three times a day. Yep. OK, so if there's something super pending um, that's time sensitive, like, see, for example, for Wingnut Social, I get emails with sales call requests. They want to be called in a timely manner. So two or three hours, I don't know. Is that is that too long to wait? I, you know, that's the thing. And that's my brain, too, because I'm such a wingnut. That's my nickname. That's why the show is wingnut, <laughs> that I have such bad ADD that I'm I – ch- I swear to you, Wendy, I check my emails every 20 minutes. Easy. But it's super distracting. Very. Because I used to yep. do the same thing. Okay. Super distracting. So if you had – if you thought that two to three hours was too much – then schedule it in again between two other tasks. You can schedule it in as many times as you want, but you're not going to go over, you know, I have like a half an hour scheduled into my schedule to be checking and dealing with. Do you have that little, that little um, notice when people email you that says bugger off. I don't check my emails until three o'clock. No. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) I hate hate those. (laughs) I don't think you, no, I don't think you need to, I don't know. I don't have, I get what you're saying about your business where it may be that you need to check it more frequently. Right. I don't think, unless if I have a project going on and I'm waiting for a specific email that needs to be answered, then yes, you can pop in, but you have to have that self-discipline to not go down that rabbit hole of all the other emails that are in there. Or or for members, I know this might be a dirty word anymore, but Howls, if you're a Howls member, you get those notifications and it's not just you that's getting the notification, it's several designers and sometimes it's the fastest designer to respond to that one. So yeah, so, yeah that, that would be something I would, I would have to think about. Maybe you check at the beginning of each hour. Yeah, for five, like for five, five, five or ten minutes or something. Okay, so yeah. do you schedule yourself downtime during the hours or are you just going yeah. crazy the whole time? <laughs> well, it depends on the day. No, <laughs> normally, no, you schedule in some time. You schedule in workout time, schedule in lunch, schedule in dinner time and breaks. We have like dance breaks in the office. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like every hour, do you yeah. put like five or 10 minutes to, you know, do the Fandango or? I don't schedule that into my time blocking, but okay. I do, we do do that. Every so often when we start to get frustrated, I'll say, all right, dance break. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Wake up, dance around. I love that. I want to come you work for you. To. I want to you do have dance breaks. I can't. It's good for you. I can't dance for anything, but I, that sounds. Me neither. That's okay. Good. <laughs> Who cares? No. Remember, I, I don't know if you remember, but you know Vanessa Helmick, right? 
Yes. Okay. Well, she was a guest on the podcast, uh, gosh, a couple hundred episodes back, I want to say. <laughs> and uh, we were at High Point and she was dancing and uh, she was get, really getting down. And I remember <laughs> I was too shy to dance. And she looks at me because I was like looking at her getting down. She's like, you know what happens if I look stupid? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> that, nobody cares. You're absolutely 100% right. Nobody cares. The only one that cares is yourself. Okay. Yep. All right. So do, is there an app? that you use for this? Or do you just manually put it in your Google calendar? Or how do you determine how much time is needed at the very beginning of the week? Is it just from experience? Generally yep. speaking, you've had to spend this much time doing A, B or C or D? Yeah, it's it's really from experience. I don't, there are apps that you can use, but I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm like a paper girl. We have a, I printed it out to show you. See? So oh, you can see yeah, it. Can so the audience see, see what? <laughs> no, they can't see that, but you can. I so can. it's just okay. a calendar with days and colors of, you know, blocks that say blog or say social media or say client work. So we know that if I give my assistant two hours to write the blog, she's much more efficient than when I said, okay, Monday is blog day. You need to get the blog done. And that's what I'm doing. Monday is blog day or Tuesday is podcast day or blah, 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 blah. Well, podcasts, that may take you the whole day to do that, but it, it shouldn't take you an entire day to do a blog. It doesn't take an entire day to do a blog. Not my blog. Yeah. It's not that good. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I hope your assistant's not enough. listening. Well, she knows. She, she would agree. <laughs> She's, Man, I mean, this we, sucks. We do our best. We do our best <laughs> to feed the Google. But yeah, you know? that's it. But, feed the Googles. Yeah. Yep. But so I we put in two hours. And the thing is, when you're time blocking, you need to overestimate. Overestimate on the time that it takes you. And then if you finish early, mm -hmm. it's a bonus, right? right? You have time to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, my I'm God. Kidding. You have time to move to the next project. This is draconian. You, you got kidding. a time block going to the bathroom. <laughs> I kidding. know that there, there's an app. I actually looked back into it not too long ago called the Pomodoro app or the Pomodoro method. Have you heard of that? I have not. That if you, I think they have it for desktop and they have it for the phone as well. It's like a timer. And it, it, you can time the, the session and it gives you 45 minutes out of every hour to do the thing and then 15 minutes to just kind of brain chill and yes. and it blocks your notifications for you, I think, if I'm not mistaken. I tried so that for a good, that. <laughs> well, you know, I did try that for a day. Yeah. <laughs> and I wasn't. It's going to take more than a day, Darla. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how much of this is a habit? Because I didn't, I did, that did not stick. So let me ask you this. When mm -hmm. you work out, are you just working out? No. Or are you doing five other things? Five other things. I'm time? going on Instagram. I'm texting my friends. I'm, you know. While you're working out, you're good. I yeah. can't do that. No. <laughs> I gotta, Wing I'm trying nut. to breathe. I'm trying to breathe while working out. <laughs> no, today I'm doing abs. I'm doing deadlifts. And in between sets, I'm texting my friends. Like, hey, You're where? so funny. Yeah. No, no, no. It's terrible. Yeah. Yep. So <laughs> I no. know I'm not alone, though. No, of course not. It takes it. It's a different kind of a brain. My brain is very organized and methodical in order for it to function without being completely overwhelmed with everything. That's just how I am. So I would say that after you have, do, it takes a couple of weeks. And when you have that schedule set and you've done it for a couple of weeks, like anything else, then it starts to become a habit. And we don't have to look at that schedule that I have printed out anymore. You know, my assistant, because she knows that right after our morning meeting, she starts doing social media and then she gets to work on the blog until lunchtime. Now, how much time a week do you think that time blocking has saved you from the old method of doing things? If you had to throw a number at it. I would say hours, definitely hours, because it's just, there are certain times when I get off on the rabbit hole and I'm off my time blocking schedule and my assistant will say to me, okay, Wendy, you need to get back on track <laughs> because it's so easy. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, I went on my email and then I started doing, looking at rugs because I got an email from Syria and I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'm like, all right, reel it in. <laughs> reel it in and back to the block. But like I was saying before, it gives you something to reel it in and go back to because you know where you're supposed to be. Okay, so let's talk about sourcing for clients because yep. I have spent nightmares of hours looking for stuff and, oh, yeah. and again, dealing with all the interruptions and, and everything. And when you're starting, I mean, time is money, period. All of this is adding up. It's taking money from your day, but it's really obvious when it's sourcing for clients because you're billing 
for client. You know, it, on paper, it's how many how many hours am I spending in this project to be profitable? So, time blocking there just seems like it's going to actually affect your bottom line. Am I am I wrong? Especially if you're doing a flat fee, because yeah. you've given them a time and that's it. You know, so mm-hmm. if you're taking three hours to find something that should take you a half an hour, then you're losing money, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. So we have our days broken down. So that time block that's set for, you know, client work is what it says on our calendar. So we use my Doma and we use the time tracker in my okay. Doma. So when if we're working on a client project, we have the timer going. And we will give ourselves a set amount of time to find a certain product. So if we're sourcing a rug, you get a half an hour to find that rug. Really? Because I get, and if you haven't found it in a half an hour, then your brain needs to move on to the next thing anyway, and you can come back to it. Okay. I was, they don't just get any old rug then. <laughs> <It's> no. Like, <laughs> it's like half an hour, too bad. You get this. Done. You get crap. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I mean, first of all, sourcing takes time anyway. It does. And it takes practice, like years and years of practice of knowing your vendors and knowing what's out there. But you also, giving yourself that half an hour to find that rug, you'd be amazed how you get it done more, much more quickly because you know you only have a half an hour. And say you find a particular chandelier and you're like, this one is great, but maybe there's another one out there that would be even greater. <laughs> Don't we all do that? Even yes. though the first one we found is great. It's perfect. It's perfect. Yep. It works. So once you've found that one that you think is perfect, stop put it in there. And then sometimes when I'm all done sourcing for a project, I'll go back around and look at things. There are some things, you know, that have to get adjusted. But yeah, setting the timer, I will set a timer on my phone and just say, all right, you have a half an hour. Or you can look (laughs) at the timer within my Doma and know that it's been a half an hour. And we use my Doma here as well at, at, at my design firm, Darla Powell Interiors. Yep. We block days and we also block hours and we also block tasks because, and when we're working on client work, we work on one client at a time because the same as a rabbit hole of emails, you can go down and be sourcing a rug for Mrs. Smith and then you see a rug for Mrs. Anderson and then you're off working on Anderson and it's easier and more focused to be just working on one client at a time. So while I'm sourcing for Mrs. Smith, if I do see something for Mrs. Anderson, I'll just write a note that I saw like a rug on Surya and put it aside. But don't go down that rabbit hole. It's really like self-discipline and really being able to stay on task. Okay. Self-discipline. You already lost me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's that's brilliant because I, I don't source as much now as I used to. Now my creative director and my designer do it, but I'm pretty sure that is how they source. But when I used to source, my, that's exactly what would happen. I would say, oh, this rug, not so much for this this client, but for the other. And then totally, yes. Ah, yep. Okay. All right. You're, you're convincing me, Wendy. You are starting okay. to convince me. All right. <laughs> but giving yourself a deadline and a set amount of time makes you more efficient, for sure. Okay. What, did I say on the Pomodoro method that they do program in 15 minutes of like yeah. downtime each hour? Now, okay. What do you think about that? Is that too much? I don't know. I don't know that I need 15 minutes every hour. Maybe 10. I think I'd rather have more time at the end of the day (laughs) to go make dinner or something. (laughs) But honestly, I end up probably having five or 10 minutes here and there because I got to go let the dog out or Mm -hmm. dance party. The phone rings. We have a dance party. So there really there are five or 10 minutes set in there. They're just not written into the time block. So it's your it's your um, design for today collaborative, right? Did I get that right? Okay. Yeah. Are we time blocking over there, too? Is everybody, are are they on board or? I don't know if they're time blocking. I'll have to Mm. ask Debbie and Marianne if they are. Yeah, you're going to have to, or you could just make them. Because Debbie's a little bit like you. you Is she? She's all over the place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I could see that. She's got those (laughs) wild eyes. Super talented. She's got all all those brain, all those creative things flowing around in her head. (laughs) (laughs) So tell us a little bit about Design for Today Collaborative. What is that exactly? Sure. So Design for Today Collaborative is Debbie Daly and Marianne Cherico and myself, all from Massachusetts, although Debbie now lives in New Hampshire. But 
the Design for Today Collaborative is the goal is to keep designers up to date on all of the things. So you know all the <laughs> things that we need to know, right? We need to know social media and we need to know sourcing and we need to know, you know, drawing programs and all the things that are constantly changing. So Debbie started the group initially it was just her and it was for you know designers in the Boston area who were have been designers for decades and they were getting kind of lost on the wayside because they weren't staying up to date with social media and things like that and right. so then we ended up long story short having a lunch and the three of us decided to collaborate together so we created the Design for Today Collaborative. So we do workshops in person in the Boston area and on all different topics. We've had them on social media. We've had them on contracts. We've had them on trade purchasing um, processes nice. and all those things. So that is what our goal is. And if COVID ever goes away, uh, we can know, go right? back to our in-person workshop. Are you going to get the vaccine? Sometime. Yeah. Yeah, you are? You know, I, well, I have a different perspective because my daughter has lupus. Oh, so okay, okay. So yes, I haven't seen her in a year and uh -huh. I will get the vaccine so that I can go and see her. So you're not one of those conspiracy theorists that is going to turn us into zombies or something. Okay. All right. Good to know. I have several <laughs> friends who are doctors and nurses who have already gotten it. Same. Yeah. They didn't grow a third eye. They're still good. Yet. Yet, Wendy. <laughs> Yet. Yet. They haven't. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Wendy. Is there anything that I've forgotten to ask you about time blocking that you think the audience needs to hear before we get into the wet up wingnut round? I would just say start out with a list of all your regular tasks that you do every week. Start out with what's most important and then plug them into times on your schedule. And the other most important thing is to turn off your notifications. All right. I'm going to do that. I am going to do that or at least okay. um, temper it. <laughs> it takes a little time. You got to get used to it. It's a dopamine rush. It's an addiction. All those notifications. It's proven totally. that psychologically it is. And I, I'll admit, I, I fall victim to that. Yep. All yep. right, Wendy Wallace, Chuck. Now I have to ask you if you're ready for the What Up Wingnut round. I think so. I know so. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wing All right, so we did eliminate one question from last year, and that was if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? And you were like so disappointed because you said you had an amazing tree. So just for you, if you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be? I would be a palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> because I would love to be tall and skinny and living in a sunny, warm breeze. <laughs> that is my answer. Okay. That's just for you. No one else. No. All right. Second, what would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Hashtag happy. Love it. If you're stuck on a deserted island and you can only have one of your favorite foods, what is it? Oh, you didn't say one. I said one. Lobst lobster then. Really? Because don't you think if you're on an island that you could maybe get lobster there? I'm saying you could bring <laughs> stuff in. <laughs> then Pizza. I got to catch them. Oh, I got to bring it in? Then it's going to be chocolate to go with my lobster. There you go. Here, you're chocolate. thinking outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> it's like coconuts. My, I, If I was stuck on an island, I would... I would want coconuts. Oh, come on. Andy. I'm going back to the tree question. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, please recommend a book that has had an impact on you either personally or professionally. So I listen to this book constantly on Audible over and over, and it is Unleash the Power Within by Tony Robbins because I went to a Tony Robbins event, the Unleash the Power Within event, and it was life-changing, I would say. Really? And yes, absolutely, 100%. And listening to it reinforces the changes I would like to implement in my life. So that was Unleash the Power Within by Tony Robbins. I'm very familiar with Tony Robbins, but I don't think I've heard that one yet. I'm going to put that in my Audible queue. And of course, that will be in the show notes at wingnutsocial.com when you go over there and check out Wendy Wallachuk's gorgeous face for this episode on time blocking. Wendy, thank you again for joining me today to try to talk me into time blocking. I think you've succeeded. I'm going to check up on you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for being here. I love Wendy Wallace, Chuck. That was such a fun interview. It was just like talking to an old friend. Wendy and I met initially by networking on social media. And then when we met in person, you guys know how it is. I think we met at High Point Market the first time in real life. We're like, I know you. I've known you forever. It's just, you know, in three dimensions now. So it, it is like hanging out with an old friend. So you just got to love these video formats. And I have to tell you, I think Wendy has talked me into sitting back down, 
looking at my schedule and really, really digging into time blocking because she looks so much more productive and happier about it. She's, she's, she's sold on it. I might want to do longer dance breaks and check my email more often, but that's the thing. You can custom tailor it for your business and whatever you need, whatever suits the way you work. It's perfect. You can, you can do whatever the hell you want. And if you want to use an app, or if you like that tech gadgety kind of stuff, try out the Pomodoro app. I know it is really well reviewed, but it, it might be overkill. You know, maybe I'll look at it again because I am one of those tech geeks for sure. Wingnut. But time is money and you don't want to be spending just ridiculous multitasking hours, you know, thinking you're handling 10 things at once when you're, let's face it, we all know it's true. You're really only handling none things at once. <laughs> I'm the biggest offender. I really, really am. I get yelled at for it all the time. I'm like, no, but this is how I work. I'm multitasking. Nobody's falling for it because it's not true. <laughs> All right, guys, if you like what you hear, please leave us a review on Apple Podcast or whatever the hell you're listening to this show on. Follow us on social at Wingnut Social and all the social media channels on God's green earth. And remember to go out there, get uncomfortable and be great. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only the first step into accelerating your business the Wingnut way. Head over to wingnutsocial.com or call us at 1-877-WINGNUT to see how we can help you take your business from social mediocre to social media master. We'll see you on the next episode of Wingnut Social, your social media tightly fastened. Not only, not a Shayna Heinrichy, fart. Oh, it's late enough. I could have had a beer. Hmm. Can I get a beer? Do you mind? Do you want a beer? I also did manage to diss the Patriots in my intro. So I'm saying I got nut nuts in my gut purely from social media. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Good boy, Mango.